Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications for distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godschalk, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Ian Putter, who is one of the new members of the board of the Hedera Governing Council. Hi, Ian. How are you? Hello, Zenobia. Fighting you. Good. Thank you. Now, Ian, we, we know you are not a floating head, but can you um, share with our audience um, why you are doing this podcast in the dark today? Yes, um, I'm in South Africa and we've got what we refer to in South Africa as load shedding. It means the, the, the inner of the, the electricity service provider is cutting down to save on electricity across the country to protect the grid. So for two hours every night, um, sometimes we get warned, but we weren't warned tonight. And we've got load shedding from six o'clock till eight o'clock South African time. My goodness. Well, we really appreciate you still joining us for the podcast. And um, we hope that everyone is is staying safe over there. And, and after this, maybe you'll get to bed a little bit early. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's get down to it. Um, tell us about your new role on the board of directors of the governing council and why you decided to run. Well, I let me answer it the other way around. I'm, I'm very excited to be on the board. Um, and I decided to run based on a few factors. I've, I've, we've been part of the DERA council for two years now as Standard Bank, and I've met a lot of the other council members. And I met some of the board members uh, historically when we spoke about use cases and new opportunities. So Adira is a very collaborative environment. And for the first time in my life, I experienced um, lots of people really trying to make things work on this distributed ledger and people sharing knowledge. I met a lot of the developers that's physically working on Adira. And we've, we've experimented with quite a few use cases and we're making significant progress on our use cases. Two or three of them is going live this month. We got uh, regulatory approval for them. And the journey with the, with the DRA council members and the board members was very, very exciting. And that's why I decided to run, um, to make decisions, to be part of the, the growth I think Adira is going into a fantastic growth phase at the moment as blockchain distributed ledger technology and crypto is across the world. There's regulatory awareness, very long-winded answer, but um, I, that's why just, there's a lot of factors that I consider. And I want to make a difference. I want to contribute to this distributed ledger that brings trust and enables lots of people to participate, um, bridging the gap between the old and the new world um, the DERA uh, uh, carbon credit progress made in Africa. So I can keep on talking for hours telling you wh why I ran. Um, and then obviously I hope to make a, make a, a contribution, um, you know, to, to bring, I've been a CFO, I've, I've filled many roles in my life. And when I look at the board members, there's fantastic knowledge there, which I could never beat. But I think, some of my exposure and experiences and my work on blockchains, private and public, will help me to contribute to the DERA board and to make a valid contribution. And I think that's an excellent point, Ian. You know, the board members come from a wide range of industries. They have such great experience, um, you know, everything from legal and finance and, um, you know, application development and building and all of those things are required if you are really trying to change, you know, have this shift in how people do computing and how people build these systems of trust. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've talked a little bit about how long it takes to build some of those systems. Can you share any more about, you know, what, 
what that progress looks like for an enterprise at scale? Well, I, if you look at, it takes, as you said, it takes a long time um, because if you think about blockchain and distributed ledger ecosystems, there's always a community, there's people that want to participate. But in some cases, if you want to scale, you've got to assist people to understand what the capabilities are that DLT bring or blockchain. And then how does that match? It doesn't work like legacy technology where you go and spend a lot of money and then you build something and everybody utilizes it. This is um, where you've got to match capability with needs, if it makes sense. And I think for us, um, as, a, as one of the council members, for us, what, what scale means is to drive Africa's growth. We are on the African continent. We want to make a difference. A lot of people talk about um, uh, banking the unbanked. There's a lot of people that don't have access to logistics. There's people, um, if you think about Africa and you think about um, economic, environmental, social governance issues, clean drinking water, scale means to enable solutions that track behaviors and help to change those behaviors over time and then to validate that things that's happening i'm talking very philosophically here but things that's happening on the ground actually contributes to a large number of people getting clean access to water and access to clean drinking water and then the other important thing in africa linked to to adira successes on carbon um uh, verification to enable people to to validate that if if something was done to contribute to the environment or reduce carbon credits, that it's that it's really so. That it's not someone that didn't chop down a wood and say we didn't kill the trees, therefore we're claiming a carbon credit, but that there's real effort that was put in to make these things available. And that's that's what you you always what we've seen with our use cases with Adira is it starts slowly. But the thing that Leonardo da Vinci said many, many hundreds of years ago is that he likes that it's not about knowledge, it's about doing. It's about mobilizing. And I think that's the things that attracted me to the Adira network. Simplicity, you can scale very secure, but you can help lots of people to make a difference in their lives by utilizing this, this platform and this technology. And I, I think it's incredible to see all of this coming together. You know, you could easily just talk about, for example, banking use cases, right? That's the, yeah, that is your bread and butter. But coming together, the council seems to have talked a lot about things like sustainability and carbon marketplaces and some of those things that can only happen, those discussions that can only happen when you are bringing together people from a variety of different industries and trying to learn from them and figure out, you know, what does that flywheel look like and how do you benefit from that collective knowledge? Exactly. And I think, I think what uh, another thing that, uh, that I didn't mention, I'm sitting here in the dark, so I cannot look at any of the bullet <laughs> points that I made because it's so dark. It's not even like a candle. I can't, I, this is coming directly from me. So this is raw. <laughs> it's, it's not prepared. It's not looking at notes quickly and answering a question. From the heart, Ian, from the heart. From the heart, from the heart. <laughs> so you can, yeah. But I think when I, when I meet the council members, the excitement, and when I look at, um, there's, there's new, potentially new uh, council members that I'm also talking to. And if I look at the excitement and what they've already done on Adira, you know, before even becoming council members, and even in South Africa and Africa, when we launched the first, uh, when we did the first press release, when, when we joined the Adira network, the excitement from big institutions, agricultural companies that contacted me personally and said, you know, we're very excited that we've been following Adira, very powerful, um, and they want to partner. It's always about partnerships, to your point. And, I, and that's what excites me. I think you're not going to, to your point, you're not going to be successful in this space if you don't want to collaborate it's not about euros, but it's about lots of people that has different views and enables things to happen a lot quicker through partnerships. Absolutely. Um, well, Ian, before we, before we let you go to find some, some light, any last words of wisdom or things that you'd like to share for what you see um, you know, on your role on the council over the next six to 12 months? 
Well, I see that things are moving at a fast pace. I like that. We've, I've already got a lot of things in my inbox. There was a few comments made. There's a lot of documents, a lot of preparation, a lot of reading. But I know there's good guidance. Good, there's going to be great conversations. I, I like fast pace. Uh, it's great to be prepared. I met Brett in Canada, physically met him in Canada in April. At the BRI, at the BRI, yeah. And, and I, I must be honest, I was very impressed uh, the way he spoke at that meeting. Obviously, a man with a huge IQ, and he fully understands this new world. So I'm very excited to work with him, to meet the others. I've met Scott. Um, I've met quite a few guys. I'm not going to mention all the guys' names, but everybody had fantastic, uh, supportive uh, comments whenever I needed to get some some advice so I'm very excited to work to work with with the board members um, what's happening in Africa is that I can see lots of things happening uh, from a carbon sustainability perspective on Adira it's amazing to track all the use cases that's happening in Kenya Uganda Uganda Ghana uh, things are really like the conversations even in the bank and some of our big customers is that, that there's a hunger to, to, to really utilize the technology to make a difference. And one thing that differentiates Africa, people here innovate out of necessity. Yeah. And the big thing here is that, that that brings fantastic creativity and remarkable energy because people really want to make a difference in their own lives and also in communities' lives. So that's, that's what I want to conclude with. That I'm, I'm very excited, and I think it's going to be a fantastic year. That's wonderful, Ian. Thank you so much for sharing, and we are so grateful for your service. And, and I think we, we're seeing the, the last lights of Ian there. So, <laughs> again, we appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we look forward to what the council is going to do um, and the board is going to do in the coming year. Thank you so much, Ian. Take care. Excellent. Thanks, Anabia. Bye.